Now let's do a, a bigger formula. Let's take this formula. Let's say we have a formula A ampersand tilde B in parentheses negated. So now we want to build a truth table for a formula that has two components. So we draw the cross of the table like that. We put the letters that are in the formula here. There's an A and a B. I put A and a B here. And we're going to assign, we're going to write down all the possible truth value assignments that A and B could have together. Given that we have two truth values, truth and falsity, and we have two letters, there's only four possible truth value assignments. Either the A and the B are both true, or the A is true and the B is false, or the A is false and the B is true, or the A and the B are both false. So if you think about it, there's no other possible combinations of truth and falsity you could assign to A and B other than those four. And so now, well, the main connective again is the tilde here, so that'll be the final column. And now Mark's going to calculate the, the table. He's going to run the table for that formula. One quick comment. Remember that um, the number of rows on a table, rows run horizontally, will always be 2 to the nth power, where n is the number of letters in your formula. So a formula with one letter will have 2 to the first rows, which is 2. A formula with two letters will have 2 to the second power rows, which is 4. A formula with three letters would have two cubed rows, which is 8. And a formula with four letters would have 2 to the fourth power rows, which would be 16, and so forth. So each time you add a letter to your formula, the corresponding table doubles, doesn't it? And then if you had a million rows, a, a million letters in your formula, your One table year. would stretch across the galaxy, basically. That's why we have computers for things like that. True. Okay. So well, you'll work it out. I worked horizontally on this one. Sometimes it's a little faster to work vertically. And what I mean by that is instead of going across row by row by row, you can realize that if A is going to be true, true, false, false, you can just make all the A's true, true, false, false. And if the B's are true, false, true, false, you can just go ahead and make all the B's this way. So you just kind of get, get it all set up. And at this point, your truth table is set up. You can start off with this tilde, and this tilde is going to negate all the B values. So you can just scream on down the line and just negate whatever you saw there. And this way, instead of bouncing around from tilde to ampersand back and forth, you can just be thinking of a whole bunch of tildes and get that clear in your head. We can now just focus on the ampersand. The left side, left column, is going to be this one here. And here's the right column. So the only way you're going to make an ampersand or a conjunction true is if both sides are true, like in that case. In all these other cases, it's going to be false. I can get this done a whole lot faster than working horizontally. And the same thing with the final connective. I know the final connective is just going to give me the negation of this column right here. So I'm just only looking at that column, and I'm just writing down the opposite of it. So the final column here is true, false, true, true. It's a combination of trues and falses telling me this is a contingency. Again, if it was all T's, you remember T starts with a, or tautology starts with a T. If it was all T's, it would be a tautology. If it was all F's, it would be a contradiction. But if you have at least one true and at least one false, it's a contingency, which just means the truth value of the statement is contingent, or depends upon the, wor the way the world's set up. It all just kind of depends on if A and B are true or false or some other combination. And can I jump in on this? All's coming in. Okay. So, so let's just let me just clarify, review a little bit. So on this row, if you're if you're going row by row instead of Mark's uh, quicker way, you'd have the A true, the B true on the first row, A is true and B is true, and then since you have B true till the B is false. Next biggest connective, the ampersand is joining this to that, so the ampersand joins this to that, and true ampersand false according to the truth table for the ampersand is false, so you can think of it that way. So the final connect, the main connective produces the final column. We see a mixture, so it's contingent. And another way to think of contingent, contingent means depends upon. Whether this statement is true or false depends on which row you look at. 
it's true on this row but false on this row. So it's truth or falsity depends on the row and that indicates that the truth or falsity depends on the way the world happens to be, as Mark said. But, uh, but this statement's not contingent because it's true in every case and so whether it's so its truth is not contingent, contingent upon which row you happen to look at because it's true in every possible case. So its truth doesn't depend on anything or vary across circumstances. So we say this is non-contingent, this is contingent, this is a uh, tautology, this is a contingency. Now can we go to a one step bigger? Hmm? Let's do a table that has three letters. As long as we're doing this. How about this? Be recycled. Yes. 